Hello everyone, my name is Kenneth and today I would like to present our submission to task 1b of the DK's 2020 challenge entitled Ensemble of Pruned Low Complexity Models for Acoustic Scene Classification. Task 1b is an acoustic scene classification task which has been a mainstay of the challenge and, but this year with an added constraint that the model size should be below 500 kilobytes. The aim of this task is to classify recordings into three coarse-grained classes of acoustic scenes, which are labelled indoor, outdoor, and transportation. These coarse-grained classes are also subdivided into 10 fine-grained classes. The dataset provided for this task is the TAU Urban's Acoustic Scenes 2020 three-class dataset, which contains 40 hours of 10-second long binaural recordings captured at a sampling frequency of 48 kHz. It also features a 70 30 train validation split, which we use to assess our model performance. As a short survey of techniques for acoustic scene classification so far, we can classify most techniques into three different types of approaches, namely data-driven approaches, representation-driven approaches, and model-driven approaches. Data-driven approaches mainly aim to improve model performance by modifying a given dataset. These include variations on mix-up augmentation, and Generative Adversarial Networks GANs, which have been more popular with the recent rise in deep learning. In particular, generating samples with mix-up augmentation is relatively cheaper than with GANs because mix-up augmentation mainly uses linear combinations of samples, whereas GANs require some form of non-linear transformation through a neural network. Representation-driven approaches, on the other hand, mainly aim to improve model performance by transforming the raw audio data into different, uh, possibly more salient features for the model. They include wavelet-based transformations, harmonic percussive source separation, as well as primary ambient extraction. Lastly, model-driven approaches mainly aim to improve model performance by modifying architectures that best replicate the desired output for a given input. A large variety of model structures and architectures have been studied in the context of acoustic scene classification, but it appears that receptive field regularized networks and knowledge distillation through teacher-student models tend to perform exceptionally well. Actually, uh, teacher-student models are also a complexity reduction strategy because usually a more complex teacher model is used to train a less complex student model that is finally used for the actual task at hand. And uh, in addition, submissions to task 1b this year also used a variety of complexity reduction strategies. These strategies can chiefly be classified into weight pruning, uh, weight quantization, as well as model depth and width reduction strategies. For submission, we made use of straightforward architectures and data pre-processing methods coupled with weight pruning in order to analyze their individual and combined effects on classification accuracy. The first step in generating predictions for submission was, of course, to pre-process the data. We took the binaural tracks and converted them into mono tracks by taking the sample-wise mean across both channels, and then converted them into log mel spectrograms by passing their short-time Fourier transforms, their STFTs, through a mel filter bank. To choose the spectrogram parameters, we performed a grid search over the number of mel bands as well as the STFT window length. For the grid search, we used a VGGNet based model, the architecture which I will show later, which was trained over 200 epochs and without any pruning whatsoever. The results are in the table at the bottom of the slide here, and we used a 50% overlap between successive windows for the STFT as well. The model performed best when the MEL filter bank with 48 filters was used together with a Han window of length 2048 as I highlighted here in red with a mean macro averaged accuracy of 88.58% on the validation set over 10 runs. Hence, we used these spectrogram parameters for submission. We also used a, a modified version of random block mixing to augment the data set. The idea is to generate a new track of a given class, say the transportation class, by concatenating M segments of randomly chosen tracks in the same class together. Each of these segments is 10 over M seconds in length, in order to ensure that the length of all augmented tracks is a constant 10 seconds. Uh, and of course, in the figure on this slide, we see uh, a sample of such an augmented track corresponding to the transportation class. On top, we have the signal in, its time, in the time domain. Below, we have its corresponding MEL spectrogram. 
We also explored the effect of varying M and the effect of varying the granularity of the labels between the fine-grained and coarse-grained classes. This experiment, in the same way as the grid search for spectrogram parameters that I shared earlier, was, uh, was conducted with a VGGNet-based model trained over 200 epochs and without any pruning. A cursory glance at the results table here in the slide actually shows that there is almost no difference in mean macro average accuracy for any of the tested schemes. And we confirmed this uh, with a Friedman test on both M and the granularity as factors. As a result, we just decided to use M equals to 10 and mix by coarse grained labels to maximize the variance of the augmented data samples over time. For our submission, we made use of variants of VGGNet and InceptionNet. Both VGGNet and InceptionNet are made up of repeating blocks, which we will respectively refer to here as VGGK and InceptionK. Uh, K here represents the number of filters in each of the two-dimensional convolutional layers in the blocks, uh, and I highlighted it in red here. Uh, on the left, actually, we have uh, the architecture of a VGGK block, which is simply a linear block of two-dimensional convolution followed by a batch normalization and then activation. And on the right here, we have uh, the architecture of an interception K block with its characteristic branching and concatenation structure. We will call the variant of VGGNet that we used for submission V of ABCD, where ABC and D are paramet parameters that control the depth of the model by varying the number of VGGK blocks used in the network. And uh, I have highlighted them in red in the architecture here. For submission, we actually used A and B equal to 2 and C and D equal to 3. Similarly, we will call the variant of inception net that we used for submission I of PQR, where PQ and R are depth parameters that control the number of inception K blocks. As can be seen uh, in red in this diagram, I have highlighted PQ and R in red. For submission, we used P and R equal to 2 and Q equal to 1. Although we fixed the depth parameters for submission, we conducted an experiment after the challenge was over to investigate how they affected the performance of the model. Again, in a similar vein as the preliminary experiments for the spectrogram dimensions and data augmentation scheme, we trained all models over 200 epochs and did not prune them at all. The results are shown in the table on this slide, and we can see quite obviously that the model complexity quickly and significantly increases with increasing depth. However, it turned out that the V2233 and I101 models were the ones that performed significantly better, with a mean macro averaged accuracy of 0 0.8921 and 0 0.8890 respectively. Here I have highlighted the results in red. So in retrospect, our choice of uh, I212 for our submission for the inception net model could have been suboptimal. After confirming our model architecture, the last step was to actually train the model. To reduce model complexity, we adopted an individual weight pruning technique, which basically entails setting a proportion of the lowest magnitude weights in the model to zero in a periodic manner during the training process. We used a pruning schedule that pruned the weights in proportion according to a cubic polynomial, as can be seen uh, from this equation here. And the equation basically states the proportion of weights SK that should be set to zero at each epoch K of pruning otherwise known as the sparsity of the model, at epoch k of course. We set the initial sparsity as not to 0 0.1 and the final sparsity to 0 0.8, that's SF, for submissions, and this allowed us to achieve a five-fold reduction in parameter count across all our pruned models. And a pictorial representation of our training schedule can also be seen in the diagram on the right here. For submissions, we trained the model for 100 epoch epochs before pruning, and then uh, we trained it for 200 more epochs while pruning it every 10 epochs and then finally we train it for another 100 epochs. This corresponds to setting t0 equals to 100 and equal to 20 and delta c equal to 10. The effect of this pruning schedule can be seen more clearly in the graph on the left where we plotted the macro average classification accuracy of a single run for a VGG net based model on both the training and validation sets over time in epochs of course. On the left part of the graph up to epoch 100, the model starts out with about 80,000 parameters and then we start to prune at epoch 100. The sharp drops in accuracy between epochs 100 and 300 here uh, correspond to each time we prune, but we can see that the model recovers relatively quickly going back to its 
initial accuracy roughly over 10 epochs before pruning occurs once again. Then at epoch 300, the pruning is completed and we are left with about 17,000 non-zero parameters in the model. And uh, even then the model has the same, possibly even slightly higher classification accuracy as the unpruned model on the validation set. To summarize our challenge submission, we submitted four pruned models to task 1D. Model 1 was just a single VGGNet based model and Model 2 was a single Inception Net based model. But Models 3 and 4 were ensemble classifiers with 5 VGG Net based models and 1 Inception Net based model. For the fused ensemble models, we simply took the mean of the individual subsystems as the final output of the classifier. Furthermore, only Model 4 was trained with augmented data. I've highlighted uh, the models trained with augmented data in red and non augmented data in blue. But uh, all our submitted models were pruned, of course. Finally, for reference, we also compared the pruned and unpruned versions of our submitted models, all trained for 400 epochs over 10 runs. The table on this slide compares the macro averaged accuracy and the memory complexity of our submissions, models 1, 2, 3, and 4, against model B, which is the baseline model provided by the challenge organizers. The model sizes were all calculated based on 32-bit floating point representation of all model parameters. Uh, firstly, we can clearly see that the 5-fold parameter reduction has been uh, achieved between the unpruned and pruned models due to the setting of the final sparsity to 0.8. Also, if we compare the mean macro averaged accuracies of the unpruned and pruned models, we can see that there is a difference of about 0.5 to 1% between them. These differences are also significant based on two-sided Wilcoxon rank sum tests. And what's interesting, however, is that there is a significant increase in accuracy for model, model 2, although it is a uh, decrease for all the other models. This could be due to a possible overfitting of model parameters to the training set in the unpruned version of model 2, which could have been resolved precisely because pruning reduced the, param the parameter count in the model. On the other hand, the decreases are as expected because of the decrease in parameter count due to pruning. In addition, we can see that the fused ensemble models, model 3 and 4, performed significantly better in the individual models, uh, sorry, significantly better than the individual models, model 1 and 2, regardless of whether they were unpruned or pruned. So ensembling did indeed have an appreciable effect on model performance. Of course, the drawback is that the ensemble models required about four to five times more memory to store their parameters, although all our submitted models here were within the size limit of 500 kilobytes. Lastly, we also looked at the effect of the data augmentation method on both the pruned and unpruned models. The table of, on this slide summarizes the mean macro averaged accuracy for the pruned and unpruned versions of our submitted models when trained on the augmented versus non-augmented data. Model 4 for our submission is actually just model, tr uh, model 3 trained with augmented data, so its results are actually on the bottom right here of the table, and that's why we don't have an additional role for it. Although there are slight differences in the means of all configurations, they were not significant based on two-sided Wilcoxon rank sum tests, except the pruned version of Model 3, which I've highlighted in red here. Uh, this was marginally significant with a p-value of 0.05. Hence, we think that actually it is safe to say that based on all the results that we have presented so far, that the effect of ensembling, pruning, and choice of spectrogram dimensions on model performance greatly outweighs any contribution due to the data augmentation method that we used. In conclusion, uh, over a number of experiments, we found that data augmentation by modified random block mixing had a mostly insignificant impact on improving macro-averaged classification accuracy. But on the other hand, we found that the choice of spectrogram dimensions and pruning schedule had a significant impact. We did not explore pruning methods very thoroughly for our submission, however, and uh, only used pruning by individual weights, which preserves the number of filters in all the models and could be computationally inefficient in practice. Hence, we could explore pruning by entire filters instead because reducing the filter count would directly reduce uh, GPU and or CPU usage. Future work could also include the development of metrics that take into account both the accuracy and the complexity of the model, since one is usually achieved at the expense of the other. And with that, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you for listening.